Hello everyone, it's Laura here, and today um, we are doing another lunch with Laura, and this is rare for my lunches with Laura, where we um, we do more like a multi-part <laughs> um, series. So, um, but this was um, something that has been requested several times, and um, in my last stream with this page bunch of people asked me to keep going so I thought hey hi Emily how you doing welcome so I figured um, I'm done work for today and um, I, I have a little bit of last-minute odds and ends to do for Christmas Eve tomorrow but um, nothing major I've got all of the gifts wrapped all the cards stuffed in envelopes and so forth so I thought hey let's let's jump on and um, do some more work with this page <laughs> yeah you are the first <laughs> so um, yeah anyway so last time we were working with the black widow um, color pencils and we were using um, only a small selection of colors which is kind of nice I tried to keep it um, a short list so that way um, you know, hopefully it's easier to follow along. Um, and so today we're going to be working on the eyes, the hair, and um, the other little fuzzy critters on this page. All right, hi Squishy, how you doing? Working and lurking, no problem. Don't get in any trouble on my account. Um, who else? Hi Shannon, how you doing? Hello. Um, hey Kim, how you doing? Oh, that's okay. Drive safe and, and don't, uh, don't get in any trouble. <laughs> I'm glad that you're happy. <laughs> Alright, you got the notification. Oh, that reminds me, there's somebody on Instagram who asked me to message them when I was going live with this page. Thank you for remembering. I'm... Okay, so they've been sent a message. I didn't forget. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, hopefully my YouTube notifications are working. But if not, um, if if there's some stream you want notifications for, I try to remember to message people. Um, hello, Carola. How you doing? Abby. So Abby just ate her dinner and she is a little rambunctious so you'll probably see her later right now she's trying to get me to play with her even though I've already played with her quite a bit oh okay <laughs> you're drawing and watching that's great um you'll have to show me what you're drawing later <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna wait a couple more minutes um hopefully um they get my message and then we can get started um, but I've pulled the colors that I used already, so I'll just list those out. Um, and let me zoom in a little bit just so that we can kind of get a better view. There we go. So um, the colors I used in the last stream are SC15 Brown Bug. This is the only one from the Scorpion set. Um, this we'll be using for the hair color today. Then we were using SD022 Mud, and that's from the Dark Skin Tone set. We used SD01, oh I'm sorry, did I say 022 Mud, and this is 011 Cinnamon. Um, we'll probably use that for the hair as well. Then we also use the Black Widow BW22. This is foxy brown. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's kind of hard to see this dark red printing. Um, this is the only one we used from the Black Widow set. Oh yeah. Then we have here SD019 Light Mocha. We This is the dark skin tone set. <laughs> We have SL020 Fairy Floss. This is the light skin tone set. And SL005 Snow. This is also the light skin tone set. Eddie. I already played with you, you goofy kitty. 
All right, let's see here. Um, oh, congrats. Yeah, the baby portrait. Gotcha. Yeah. I can check your Insta story, too. <laughs> I try to catch everybody's. Hi, Susan. Hi, Linda. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, this is an unplanned stream, so... Um, we will be working tomorrow, just um, a heads up, I am going to be working tomorrow morning on this page here, um, as usual, so um, if you're looking forward to the Villain Son series, that will still occur tomorrow as usual. Oh, here we go, Abs. Abby is already in the video, hello, she's changing my lighting, okay, hi cutie, are you going to sit down? How, how did I know this was going to happen? Hmm, I wonder. Oh. I re I've been rearranging my studio and reorganizing it, and Abby is exploring and loving the changes. She just um, is enjoying, it's like having a whole new brand new house. Um, <laughs> so she is really having fun with that. So she might be back again. Um... <laughs> All right, let's see, uh, Abby. <laughs> Hi, Mousy Deb. <laughs> okay. All right, Abs. You gonna play? Yeah, Abby is definitely the star of the show. I'm just here as a sidekick. <laughs> I'm just here uh, for comic relief. <laughs> Welcome, Linda. Well, thank you for joining the chat, <laughs> and thank you for watching my videos. I'm glad that you've been. Uh, hanging out with us even if we didn't know it. <laughs> All right, where is the kitty cat? Just I have a Where did she come? Oh, she's okay. She's checking out underneath <laughs> the furniture now. A uh, little wild child. <laughs> Bo, you made it. Okay, good. All right. Bo is the one I messaged and the one we were waiting for. Hello. I'm glad you got the message. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we can get started. I didn't want to start without you. Um, I was hoping that you would come. Okay, so let's just take care. Um, we have the eyes and the hair I really want to get um, finished, and then we'll jump on to the fuzzy bits. Okay, Abby, are you going to... Abby is really wild. Sorry, guys. This is why I don't normally stream at this time of the day. Are you coming up here? Yes, you are. Okay, hi. <laughs> that was just a drive-by Abby sighting. And we're good. Okay. So, <laughs> let's see. Before we get started, I should just pick out some colors for the eyes okay so I'm going to sharpen this because it's oh hello hi welcome back to the channel Beth. are you going to lay oh you're going to lay down right there please please don't bump the camera cutie okay, let me zoom out so you guys don't get seasick I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is a live show. This is a chat show. <laughs> if you don't know me, my name is Laura. <laughs> and, uh, oh, don't be sorry, Bo. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Emily, at least she doesn't turn it off midstream. I'm waiting for the day when that happens, but so far, so good. Okay, you're going to sit right there. That's classic Abby move right there. All right, settle down. Where are we going? You gonna sit right there? That's great. You can sit right there. Yeah, good girl. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it zoomed out for right now <laughs> while I pick some colors. <laughs> and we will uh, see where Abby ends up. So I think for the iris, or for the whites of the eye, we're going to use the SD018 Graythorn. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> oh, don't be sorry, Bo. Don't worry. And yeah, you can always watch it back. If anybody misses anything, it's no big deal. Um, okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit, a bit away in case she decides to... Yeah, Abs. Hi. You guys, she is so cute here. Before I... Before we get moving, let's see if I can just really quick show you guys Abby here. Abby! <laughs> there she is. And cutie, can you say hi to everybody? Hi! Welcome to the stream, cutes. There, now she, you guys can see her face. Let's see if I can move the camera back. There we go. Alright, cutie. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, fluff bum. <laughs> yeah, she does like to walk all over it, but that's okay. Luckily, this is, now when I do client work, I don't let her do that. But luckily, this is uh, <laughs> this is just for fun. Okay, so I'm gonna see how far we can stay zoomed in without having her uh, interrupting. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's a cutie for sure. So we're going to use Grey Thorn. This is from the Dark Skin Tone Set and let's just shade the darks of the eyes. And the reason I'm going to do this first is I really haven't decided um, what color her eyes are going to be. Um, I know that people wanted green but I'm leaning more towards a dark brown. Um, here but we can we'll, we'll decide that in a minute so what I'll do is I'm going to do the whites because that's going to be the same so what I'm doing is I'm just going right under this lash line here and putting this gray thorn color which is really nice and also oh okay there she goes you leaving She's saying, sayonara, see you later. She doesn't know how to get over there. Okay, cool. <laughs> now she's watching the birdies in the window, which is just fine <laughs> with me. Works out. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> Hi, Sinwin. Hello, welcome. I'm sorry if I missed anybody. <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions for me, don't forget to put it in all caps, just so that I can uh, see it a little easier. Um, it is not always easy to catch things in the chat, and I apologize for that. Okay, now we can really zoom in and see see much better what we're doing. Alright, let's see if I can rearrange things just a bit. Make it a little easier for me. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. Now, I hope you guys can see a little better. So, I'm just going right under the lash line first. And this side of the face will be darker, because remember the light is coming from this direction. So, I'm going to actually, on this side of the white of the eye, we're going to Pretty much give that a full gray layer and I'm gonna do the same over here so right under the lash line and then kind of curve around and down and now this will be the lightest part of the whites of the eyes so in that situation just under the lash line and just a little bit near that waterline will do. Now for my taste this isn't dark enough especially on the dark side of the eye or on the dark side of the face. So I'm going to switch now to hi Jacqueline welcome. Hi Robin hello. Okay so we're going to switch to SD014 this is also in the dark skin tone set it's midnight and let's go right under that lash line again give it even more depth and you might say why am I using basically a black color 
on the whites of the eyes, but the whites of the eyes are not actually white. White is not white. <laughs> so, and this just takes careful observation. I'm just aware of this over time, doing a lot of portraits. But if you ever get stuck on something, don't be afraid to look at yourself in the mirror. Um, I did a lot of self-portraits when I was first learning, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, I went a little too far. It's okay. So I'm going to grab my Mono Zero Eraser. This is the Tombow. And just lighten that up just a bit. And that's the benefit of using a light touch. Okay, now I can go back in. This is the Midnight again. There we go. Alright. Just a little bit more on this side. Okay, so I have to decide an eye color. <laughs> um, Alright, so let's see what we have here. I'm going to try to stick to the Scorpion or the Black Widow set, just because we've already used one color from those sets already. Hmm, but I'm kind of leaning towards brown eyes. Hmm, I'm trying to keep this a really limited palette. So I think the background will be a blue. So I think I'm either going to go for brown eyes or blue eyes. Um, hmm, <laughs> okay, let's put a toe vote in the chat. Chat. What would you like to see, brown or blue eyes? And we will just take a quick vote. Um. <laughs> let's see, let's see what the, what the people want. Brown or blue? Because I have an idea for the background that I came up with. Um. Oh, okay, Bo. <laughs> You're reprinting it, huh? Blue. We've got one vote for blue. <laughs> All right, Robin says blue. We've got two browns, one from Katrina and one from Dorothy. Oh, then Sinwin says brown. And Shannon says brown. Oh, okay, no problem. Sleep well, Carola. <laughs> Alright, anyone else in the chat? We've got four for brown and two for blue. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. All right, I'm going to give it another minute, and then I think it's going to end up being brown if we don't have any more votes. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, the reason why I was thinking either brown or blue is because I was thinking about putting green for the greenery, but the more I'm looking at it, the more I kind of want to limit it to a, a brown and blue palette. So in that situation, what I'll do for the greenery is actually make it um, kind of frosty. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a frosty kind of blue and white um, greenery. And the branches will be brown, and I think most of the fuzzy bits will be either brown or gray. Now, anything I show you in this video, you can go ahead and interpret it your own way with your own color. So this is not by any means... Um, the only way you can color this drawing, um, but I just figured for my own. Um, okay, Mousy Deb says brown. Yeah, I use I use a, a yellow with the the brown for the highlights. Um, <laughs> well, green isn't one of the options. We've got blue or brown. <laughs> um, Okay, so we have Susan says brown. <laughs> yeah, 
just brown or blue. Now you can make your eyes green. <laughs> you can take whatever I do and, and apply your own colors. <laughs> and just take a look at the, the shadows and the highlights that I and where I place them and, and uh, pick your own colors instead. <laughs> Gotta love you, Bo. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like we might have brown as the winner here. Hey, Bo, do you have a vote? Brown or blue? <laughs> Let's see. Make sure, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we're gonna go with brown, um, and that's that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she she's just giggling now, so that's fine. Um, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad to make you laugh. Okay. So let's zoom in. This is a really small set of eyes here, so let's let's uh, sharpen some pencils. I know you guys are like, well, who is this girl? Why is she sharpening pencils? But, um, <laughs> let's see here. I'm going to use cinnamon for the darks. So cinnamon is the color we were using for the face as well. I kind of like using um, similar colors when we're um, doing an image. So let's see here. <laughs> um... Yeah, brown, brown, purple, Emily. <laughs> okay, all right, we're going to do brown. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Okay, so I hope you guys can see. Let's see how far I can zoom in. Okay, that's the farthest I can zoom in, man. Okay, you can see every problem now, <laughs> every bad thing. That's okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is right under the lash line, I'm using SD011 Cinnamon. And we're going to go right under this lash line. And I'm going to start with a light touch. And we're going to create this dark shadow that the eyelashes create. And this will be the darkest part of the iris. Now I'm going to swap over to the other eye. And whenever things come in pairs, I like to do the same thing on both. Now we have an indication of where the light source is from the dot in the eye. Now since I've decided to go in a different direction, I'm actually going to fill that in and we're going to put our own dot in because it's coming from the other direction. And so you can disregard this dot, or you can leave it in, whatever you like. But me, I'm going to change where the light source is. So we're going to cover that up. It might look funny for right now, but you'll see. I'm going to go back in with a pen. Okay, so now that we have that covered, now I'm going to pick a golden color, and I really love the dark skin tones, olive gold. This color is really pretty. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, this color is really pretty. I think it'll make a nice um, golden part of the eye color. Hi, Judy. Welcome. <laughs> All right, so I've gotten this really nice and sharp. Now we're going to just fill in the rest of the eye for right now. We'll go back in later with more details. But right now we're just putting a light layer of this. It's SD012 Olive Gold. Okay, now I'm going to go back in with the cinnamon. So we're using the SD011 Cinnamon. And now I'm going to go around the ring of the iris. And 
And so if you were using green, I would pick two or three greens and use the dark one the way I'm using the cinnamon and the lighter ones the way I use the gold. Okay. So now there's this center of the iris which I like to give some um, detail to. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. It's so small. Um, but what I'm going to do is just flick outward from the center with just some short little strokes. It's very, very subtle because this is a small area. That's okay. Now, the last color we're going to grab for the eyes here is yep, mud. So this is SD022 mud. We used all of these in the skin as well. So I'm just going to go at the very top near the lash line and really fill that in really well. I'm also going to make sure that that light spot is filled in. Okay, so now this looks really funny because the light spot is gone and because we've changed the light direction. So I'm going to do something here to fix that. I have two tools here for the job. You can grab any small, tiny fine liner. Here I have the Micron 005. You can also use the Statler fine liners or the, um, the uh, which one called Faber Castell fine liners. Any brand will do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this half moon shape that we have from the um, from the light spot. Hi, Shaleen. Welcome. <laughs> I haven't seen you here in a while. Thanks for coming by. So we're going to fill in and create a full pupil layer on both sides and while we're here I'm also just going to reinforce the lash line a little bit while we're at it just because the ink of the printer isn't really super dark so you might as well do that now I have here a um, Uniball White Signo Gel Pen. You can also use a Posca. What I'm going to do is make sure that it's ready to go. So I like prime it up if you know what I mean. Like kind of doodle on a separate sheet. Make sure it's really good. Since the light source is coming from this direction, I'm going to put a white dot. Right. Hello. If it will go right there. right there and that allows it um, to match the light direction so I hope you guys can see that um, hi Jody welcome hi Jilly thanks for coming guys all right so yeah let me keep these pulled out so I can list them in the description um, at the end of the video I'll list all of my materials in the description so that you can go ahead and um, get them if you need them. Okay, so now let's see here. Um, yeah, that's that looks okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to move to. Um, let's see. I want to fix the eyelashes a little bit and the upper eyelid. So we're just going to do that before we move on. So I'm using SD zero one one cinnamon. And I'm just going to go right along the top eyelid, 
going to just darken that up a little bit. Seeing everything in context now. You know how it, things like change once you add, if you fill in one spot, the way things look changes. So let's just go ahead and fill that in. Make it a little more pronounced there. Like that. Okay. And then another thing I want to do um, with the cinnamon color is just go ahead and fill in that little, it's typically pink, but on this side it's going to be brown because it's in the shadow. Just that little corner of the eye there. And over here I'm just going to do the outline with that one. And then I'm grabbing SL022 zero fairy floss that's the same color we used for the lips and the blush and the cheeks and i'm just gonna fill in that little pink notch right there in the eye um oh jody so um i actually drew this page as a request from a friend last year um and when i she just wanted a um a new year's eve Eve page because she said there's not a whole lot of New Year's Eve pages out there. Will you draw one? And I thought it was a fabulous idea. I, am, I switched to SD011 by the way, cinnamon. I'm just going to kind of give a little more definition right here along this bottom lash line. Um, and um, so I thought it was a fabulous idea. And so I drew this, this elf. And while I was drawing um, this page, I noticed that um, I looked at her Instagram, you know, her all of the coloring that she does, and I noticed that she picked out a lot of pages that had animals in them. So I decided to put the animals around her. Since it's an elf, and I don't know, I just thought it would um, look really nice together. So um, that's it's it's not a huge story. Um, mostly it was just a request and um, I really liked the idea so I went with it. Um, okay, so I'm going to use this cinnamon color now we're going to move on to her hair. Um, I'm just going to use this. Uh, yeah, I like the names of the pencils too. So let me zoom out just a little bit just so we can see the hair. Oh, that's a little too much. Hold on move this up a little there we go okay so let's get going on the hair so we already started with the cinnamon color so I'm gonna keep on going with it for right now but we're gonna make this a ginger so this cinnamon color will just be in the darkest parts of the hair so keeping in mind that in this particular scenario I have the light coming from the top um, right we are going to Try to shade everything with that in mind. And so this will be the darkest color in the hair except for maybe the really dark spots back here. And I'm just going to start with this and we'll see where we're going to take it. So even though she's going to have ginger color hair, we're going to have brown as, as the darkest color in the very shadows. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have elaborate stories, Jody. you're right, but um, this one isn't as complicated. And this wasn't part of my book. It, it's just a single page, or actually it's a pack that I created last year um, during the holiday season. And I had so much fun drawing it. So. Um, and a bunch of people have been buying it, I guess, for this New Year's Eve. And someone was like, hey, can you... Actually, a couple of people have asked me if I could color it. 
because this is line art. This is the style of drawing that I was doing last year. So my style, my, my coloring book style and my, my drawing style has really changed in just one year. Um, now I do grayscale and semi-grayscale. And, uh, but back at this time, I was still doing mostly just line art. I'm really happy to help out. And I'm excited for the new year. I hope it brings everybody so much joy and happiness. I'm hoping that I feel a lot better next year. I don't have the health issues I was dealing with this year. And, um, yeah. I just hope it's a better year for everybody. Oh look, I forgot this whole section of hair. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's fix that. <laughs> going to get more black widows. Um, yay, ginger hair, yeah. <laughs> yup, Jody. Um, I'm not sure either, Bo. Yeah, it is amazing how much we can change and grow in one year. And, um, you know, I think it's always a good thing. I try to do this every year um, around New Year's. I try to reflect on what has been good and what hasn't been good and kind of just like get a feeling for you know what I what my plans are for the next year I tend to try and not do resolutions anymore just because I just feel like it it sort of puts a lot of pressure but more just setting goals and trying to kind of understand and reflect in a way um, and um, learn a little bit about myself in the process, hopefully. <laughs> so I've been doing that a lot lately, even though the new, it's not even, you know, Christmas yet, but I've just been I'm just really thinking about what I have planned for next year and uh, what I'd like to do. And, um, yeah. And so... I can say for certainty that there will be a whole lot more YouTube videos, so that's good. Abby. So we're going to have a lot more fun in the new year, because I love teaching. Uh, but I've, I've learned a whole lot this year about YouTube and how to stream and I feel like I'm slowly getting better at that, and hopefully I will continue to get better. Um, but yeah, just really enjoying teaching. I find that teaching is um, something that I never thought I would do, but um, now that I'm doing it, I like it. <laughs> And I just fell into it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hello, Charisma. Uh huh. Yay, Black Widow. Yeah. Um, I've been using the Black Widows quite a lot, actually. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wizard. Welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before. 
Uh -huh. Yeah, I like the Black Widows. Actually, I love all of my pencils for different reasons, to be honest with you. Um, the only ones I don't use very often are the Artezas or the Derwents. Um, I, if I'm using high quality light fast pencils, I tend to use my luminance ones. And um, if I'm using a budget pencil, I don't know why, but I don't like the Artezas as much. I tend to prefer the Black Widows or the, <laughs> that sounds crazy, but the Crayolas actually. And so, but everybody has their own preferences. I'm definitely not an, a review channel. I don't do reviews. Uh, Abby girl, what are you doing? Oh, you are so cute. I see. She's like, look at me, look at me. I'm in a box. I'm real cute. Yeah, you're cute. You want me to throw you? No, she doesn't want a mousey. What do you want? Now she's investigating again. Alright. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's a reason why I usually do my streams early in the morning, and that's because Abby is sleeping usually then. Or at least less active. But that's alright. This is a live show, and you guys know Abby by now, so that's good. <laughs> Let's see, what are you guys saying? <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody has their own thing. <laughs> I know some people love the Artezas, some people hate them. It's all okay. Hi, Cat and Peace. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, Abby's right here next to me. She demanded to be pet. Mm -hmm. Bumping up against my chair. Okay, so we're going to use this quite a lot on the dark side. We used a whole lot less on the light side. Oh, here she comes. Abby, hello. <laughs> Welcome back to the camera, Abs. Okay, she's funny. Let's zoom out. Okay, hi. You coming back? I see you're coming back. Okay, Abby, hi. Alright, settle down. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are we doing? Sorry, guys. Yeah, you love everything. You have to rub your face on everything. Lay down, Abs. Oh, okay. <laughs> you gonna sit there? Well, that works for me. <laughs> All right. Here, let me move that. You gonna sit there? <laughs> All right, I'll just stay zoomed out and see what happens. I'm still using cinnamon. Oh, well, I knew I was gonna come. I knew she was gonna come back. Any <laughs> girl, lay down. Will you lay down? Oh goodness! Hi. Changing the lights. Rubbing up against everything. I know. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> there she goes. She's settling down. Let's see if I can fix this. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Sorry guys. You guys know she's she has a mind of her own. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Jody. Hi, Natalie. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Okay, maybe I can zoom in. She's sitting right next to me now, so hopefully that's where she's going to end up. Are you going to stay there, cutes? 
see if I can zoom in again. <laughs> Hi, yeah, you good girl. Alright, stay there. Okay. So let's go back to where we were. We're still using uh, SD011 cinnamon and just shading the dark side of the head with this cinnamon color. Okay, so right now it looks like her hair is going to be brown, but here's the fancy part. This is where we're going to start to make it look like ginger. I'm going to pull, hmm, yeah, let's see, I don't want it to be super duper crazy, but let's start with Sherbert. This is going to be a really bright color, so I'm only going to use it sparingly in the transitions. Then I'm also going to pull Saffron, which will be our light color. So these are the two. So these are both from a light skin tone set. We've got Saffron and Sherbert. You can see on our color chart here, there's Sherbert, there's Saffron. So this is where she's going to start to look more ginger. Um, okay. <laughs> yep, we've got everybody here. Alright, so let's see. Let me just double check. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to start on the dark side so that way if I mess anything up here I'm going to sharpen this. It's it's the manufacturer's point still. So let's just give that a quick sharpen. Um, I'm using my handy dandy sharpener still. This thing is alive and kicking. I'll show you guys. I, I emptied it recently but it is it just holds so many shavings. It's so fun. So that's my handmade sharpener. You can see me how I made that um, on a different video on my channel. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's start in the dark side. And we're going to work our way over to the light side. Now I'd like the hair to look super shiny and my technique for doing that is always leaving a little bit of white even even though no matter the hair color it's going to have a little bit of shine to it and the trick for shine is contrast so I'm going to leave a little bit of white we're going to work in some of our lighter color And if this isn't dark enough, we can always go back over it again. I think we're going to use brown bug for the darks. Uh oh, here she comes. Okay, Abs. Hi. Welcome back. Yeah, let's move this. Oh, right. Thank you for sitting right on her face. Thanks. Thanks. Can I just have this, please? Can I, can I move your fluff? No, let's see if I can rotate her a little bit. Cutie. Ready? <laughs> Man, that was great. She just... <laughs> Abby, that's rude. <laughs> Hi. Okay, we're taking a kitty break, I see. Sorry, guys. This is uh, a live show. I'll zoom out. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can see more of her belly. <laughs> Look, Abby's hair is ginger. This is the color we're going for. She's just giving us a, a reference, that's all. Okay, let's see if I can color around her <laughs> little feet here. Can I just, can I just, uh... <laughs> okay, we're still using Sherbert. <laughs> She's so funny. Alright. 
<laughs> I hope you guys can see this okay. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love Abby. I can't be mad at her. <laughs> yes, I have done more sharpening this year, Bo. More, th more than usual. Um, I think it's a combination of the fact that I love my sharpener, and also I have so many more pencils now. I used to only have a very few amount of pencils, and when you have less of something, you're much more frugal with it. <laughs> But now I have more pencils, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep it in camera. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's see. Where can we... We can kind of color around a paw. Can I have... Can I... Yeah, there we go. Oh, you are so cute, though, guys. She is something else here. Let's see if I can... Can I... Can can I have you? Oh, okay. She, she's just deciding to to show us her belly. Hi. Can I have you? Can I have you, Abby? All right. Let's see if I can move this around a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Live shows are always interesting. Right, Em? You always make it interesting? Mm hmm. <laughs> She's watching me color. It's so cute. Sometimes I wonder what my cat thinks when I'm coloring. What are you doing? Or drawing or painting or anything else? It's in that head of yours, huh? Goodness. Okay, you're cute. You're very, very cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah she is so cute I mean I, I don't know maybe I can raise it up a little so you can see her but she is just hamming it up like so many so many Okay, hi. Y yeah, you you're cute. You're very cute. Of course, she, her head isn't in camera. Can I have you? No. You're just going to keep showing your belly, please? Come here. Let's, oh, okay. No, you don't want to, huh? Come here. Snuggle. There we go. Whew. Let me get my desk back. There we go. Having her in my arms is tricky, but I think it's easier than having her on the desk. <laughs> okay. Now I can zoom in again. Yay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you for bearing with me here. <laughs> uh-huh. Hi, Deb. I think I said hi. Hi, Shara. Welcome. <laughs> We're having... Uh, uh, cat or missions all over the place so <laughs> okay let me just adjust the light because it seems like it is blaring a little bit there we go <laughs> oh where are you going huh can can you settle down settle down hmm? check it down come here there we go Alright, finally 
finally got her settled. Yeah, you're very cute, Abby. Everybody loves you. <laughs> now she just has her face in my face. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I'm just rotating the page just a little and make it easier for me. I'm doing this one-handed, so a little bit trickier. All right, I need to check the chat too. I feel like I'm missing something. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> oh, you can hear her purring. Yeah, yeah, she is a little motor when she purrs. Uh-huh. <laughs> Happy they can hear you. I feel like a lot of the times when she gets on my desk, she just wants me to pick her up and hold her. And so I have her in my arm, on my left arm. So I'm just working my way through towards the lights. And in each case, I'm just following the direction of the strands, the way they've been drawn already. So you guys can do that too. So cute. <laughs> I like it when she is so she's like in my arms, but now she's watching me. It's so funny. Like I do wonder what she thinks. Does anybody else's cat do that? Let me just rotate the page so it's a little easier for me. Um <laughs> I have no idea, Mousy Deb, and I don't wanna know. <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve, Eve, Shara, and happy holidays to all of you who don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> Alright, just to make it easier on myself since I'm doing this one-handed. Don't be afraid to rotate the page in any direction you need to make it comfortable for yourself. Alright. Right, Abby? <laughs> oh, you're getting restless, huh? Okay, all right, all right. Where are you going? You want to sit behind me? Here. You sit behind me. We're just doing a little kitty rearranging. You gonna sit there? There we go. Oh, Abby's an older cat. She's 18. She has arthritis, so she tends to wiggle around a lot and move positions. 
And so, but she does love, I'm like on the edge of my seat and she like loves to sit behind me on my chair. Susan. Um, Nala's too busy trying to steal your pencil or pens or pencils. <laughs> That's funny. I'm very lucky. Abby, um, she's very well trained. When when I she was young and I first got her, um, she, I got her when she was actually seven years old. Uh, that's when she came into my life and um, I used to spray her with a water bottle to train her not to get near my art materials if they were like paint or ink or something that I didn't want her to get into. And uh, you see, like I allow her with pencils on my table, but she doesn't tend to play with them so much. And I don't know if that's just because she's older or if I just have so many toys for her that she <laughs> she doesn't, I don't know what the reasoning is, but she's a very good kitty. She doesn't, she doesn't go after my stuff. So it's nice because I can leave my stuff out and I know that they're not going to travel away from me or anything. Um, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're done with this sherbet color. Um, I'm gonna go towards the light end and then we're gonna come back in and darken things up. But let's just see how the lights look. So I'm going to, I'm sharpening up the saffron color, that's SL002. I'll show that in just a moment. Okay, the trick with hair, I like to have them fairly sharp so we can get some nice fine strands. This is SL002 Saffron. This is in the light skin tone set as well. And we're going to go ahead and... Now I'm working into the white area of the paper. I'm going to leave a little bit of the white, but for the most part, cover up the rest with this color. Oh, it's such a pretty color. This is a really nice color for ginger hair. So we want, since the light is coming from this direction, we want the, the bright spot on the top of the head to be Right about here. Like that. Let me see. This looks a little bright. Hold on, let me fix. Oh, that's too dark. It's tough because... No. Abby's been messing with my lights, so now I'm not sure. Yeah, everything looks a little funny. Okay, well that's, yep. It's about as good as it's gonna get, I think. So you see, I'm just leaving a little bit of that white, white of the paper. Not a lot. This is in a darker section. 
but we're just picking out where those those light areas would be. <laughs> yeah, Hanukkah does start today, Shara, you're right. Um. <laughs> yeah, Jody, the young ones do tend to be much more rambunctious. <laughs> um, I don't mind them. I, I like the waxy feel, Shara, but remember, I do also use... Crayola color pencils and Crayola, um, Crayola crayons, which are even waxier. So, um, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I find they layer really well. I think the trick with any waxy medium is to layer, layer, layer. Um, and that way you're not putting down so much wax and you can build up the pigment. Um, but I, since I love to layer, I find these to be really, really nice. They suit me well. And I think they're less waxy than, say, the Artezas, which I think have a funny kind of oily waxy feel, um, as opposed to these, which are more like a dry waxy feel. Um, but everybody has their own preferences. Um, they're not going to be comparable to, say, the Luminance. Um, I find that the Prismas are softer but waxy. So every pencil is slightly different, but um, I do really like these. I don't know why, I just do. I I find them to really work for me. Um, but the reason why I'm not a reviewer is because I really do acknowledge the fact that everybody has their own personal preferences and their own way of working. And so, um, you know, what works for me might not work for someone else. Um, and also... Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm a big advocate of trying it out. So I would say if you're not sure about them and, you, um, and you're on the fence about buying them, luckily these come in small sets. So I would recommend if you're just buying one set, get the dark skin tone set. I like that set the best. Um, and then try them out and see what you think. Um, like with, with the luminance, I bought just a few pencils to try them out. Um, I have one <laughs> Pablo pencil, <laughs> so I just buy them here and there and try them out before I go ahead and commit to a full set. Um, yeah, Shar, if you get impatient, these might not be the right pencils for you because they don't lay down pigment in one go. They're definitely a layering pencil. Um, but yeah, I do. I like that though, <laughs> so it just kind of depends on how you work. Um, okay, I'm going to switch over to SC15. Um, this is, why is this so, there we go. Uh, this is SC15, this is Brown Bug, this is from the Scorpion set. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in our darks. So we've got the lights, um, and we've got the mid-tones, but now I want to kind of pop it and make it have more contrast. Um... Yes, Deb, the paper can make a huge difference. Right now I'm working on a vellum surface paper which has a nice tooth to it. And that allows a lot of layers. Um, I don't recommend a smooth paper for these particular pencils. I feel like you'll you'll be frustrated and um, kind of max out on the paper tooth in, in a quick amount of time. So I would recommend a drawing paper or um, a toothy, um, like this is a Bristol vellum, so it has a nice toothy surface. Um, I'm not sure how to soften oil pastels. I'm sorry, Robin. I don't actually use pastels that much. So, but maybe somebody in the chat can answer that question for you. Um, yeah, paper plays a huge role in how the medium interacts. That's a very good point, Deb. So, if you're using like printer paper or cheap cheaper paper, smooth paper, card stock, that kind of thing, can be kind of tricky to work with. 
okay this this brown bug color has a lot of red in it and it's pulling a lot of the reds we already put down it's kind of playing with that and pulling it out more a little mistake there that bunny's just gonna be a little skinnier no big deal not as fluffy okay I'm gonna put a little of this right here this is in the light area of the hair this is this is a dark spot here because the the hair here and also the bunny are casting some shadows. Like that. But then over here is fairly light, so I'm not going to put too much of this color over there. Just a little. Like so. Um, okay, thanks for stopping by, Shaleen. It's good to see you. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, okay, Jody, have a great shower. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I like the Black Widow color names too. They are definitely fun. Okay. So let's put more of this brown bug. And I'm going to work a little of this brown bug color into her skin as well, just to kind of tie the two together right along the edge of her face. Not a lot, just a bit. So, um, yep, just checking the chat. Oops, I bumped the camera, sorry. So let's just go ahead and do the part here in the middle. It's definitely going to have some dark spots there. But you can see I'm leaving some of that lighter color. Now going to the other side. Just checking the chat, we're good. All right. And adding a little of this nice dark reddish brown right here at the corner.
just really relaxing and just placing color and layers. I think the reason why I don't get impatient with coloring is just because I consider it to be a form of relaxing and unwinding. So my goal is not to finish the page quickly. You guys know that I take forever. <laughs> But especially with coloring, my goal is just to enjoy it, to, to be mindful of my process, and to just relax and wind down after a busy day. I had a crazy week with work, and so um, a lot of the times I'm coloring just to kind of get away from that bustle. And with my own personal work where I'm not coloring, I tend to get really stressed out. I'm trying to be perfect even though I know that that's not possible. <laughs> but sometimes I, I do, you know, like if I'm doing work for shows or commissions, I do tend to worry a lot more about that kind of work. But for my own coloring, if I make a mistake, it's not a big deal because I'm not going to sell it. It's just for fun. So it takes a lot of the pressure off. So that's, that's how I really uh, learn patience, I think, with, with coloring in particular. Just knowing that it takes some time, so I just let it take however long it takes. There's nothing wrong with being a slow or a fast colorist. Whatever works for you. Okay, so I want to go back in now with our lightest color, just to kind of solidify everything. So I'm going to grab SL002 Saffron, and um, I'm just going to go back over and darken up a lot of this area. So I do want to leave some white, but really just a very small amount, especially in this dark area. I'm going to get rid of the white there. So I'm not burnishing everywhere not pressing down really hard. I don't mind seeing the tooth of the paper a little bit. Um, hair has those specular highlights. So I feel like the tooth of the paper really works in this situation. Um, but I do press down a little bit harder in the darker areas to kind of burnish those spots. Again though, this is, you can color it any way you like. I'm just going to show you my way of doing it. Grab a drink of water. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I haven't put everybody to sleep. <laughs> okay. Let's just... Uh, Alright, so we've got... Quite a lot of layers down, so this pigment is moving around really well. So I don't want all this white here, so we're just going to work, work this light color up. And let's actually darken up right here as well. Um, oh good, you're still here. Alright.
Melanie. Welcome. And hi, Rosemary. Hello, ladies. I didn't think I saw you came in, but uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you like her. This page is really fun, actually. So I'm very happy that it was requested. Thank you so much. This is why I like doing requests, because sometimes... People pick things for me that I would not normally pick to do myself, necessarily, but I always end up enjoying them anyway. Uh, there's been some times I turn down requests, but not very often. So, okay. So her hair is looking very, very red. <laughs> I think it looks a little redder on in person than it does on camera, but that's okay. Um, let's see if I can maybe adjust the camera a little bit so I can pick that up a little better. There we go. That's more accurate. Let's see. Yeah. Hmm. A little bit brighter too. Let's see if I can. There we go. That's a little bit more accurate. It's tough to get it perfect. It's something that I think all of us YouTubers struggle with is getting it to look perfect on camera. Um, but we do our best. Okay. So before we move on, I want to take the brown bug that we were using, SC15 from the Scorpion set. And I'm just going to go right around her hair and just go ahead and add a little bit more depth. And this is something that we did talk about a little bit in the other stream where we might have to touch up a little bit at the end once we see things all put together. Because the great thing about objects is that they all interact with each other. So the color space will influence each other. So this red hair will definitely add a color to her skin. We did a little bit of that up here. Let's add a little bit right down here. And I'm going to add even more. We did a little bit of this earlier, but let's just darken that up. It kind of comes together and brings the two objects so that they're more cohesive together. Let's actually add a little bit more dark right back here behind her ear. And let's do a little bit right above her ear right here too. Just to kind of push that hair back in space a little more. Okay. Alright. So I think that's about where I'm going to leave it for the hair. Um, now let's move on to the... Actually, before we move on, let me just um, add a little bit more of this brown bug to her eyebrows. Now that I see the hair and how dark it got. I'm going to just add a little bit more of this right to the eyebrows. Always good to address the eyebrows at the same time you're doing the hair. That way you don't have to remember what colors you were using. <laughs> Let's make this one a little bit. There we go. Alright, <laughs> let's do a little bit more right here. It's funny how... There we go. Alright, so I think I'm fairly happy with that. Um, let's move on to the little critters. So, um... Hmm. <laughs> Happy holidays, Rosemary! Uh, Rosemary... At what age did you realize 
that one, art was more a fleeting thought, and two, that you're gifted? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, while I think about that, the answer to that, um, I will start picking out colors for the little fuzzies. So I think I'm going to start with the owl, maybe. What, what, what colors are we going to use for these? Um, as far as when I s knew that I loved art, um, see, I've always been creative ever since I was a little girl. Um, I would draw, I would actually draw pages for my sister to color when I was a, a little young kid around the age of five. We didn't have coloring books growing up. Um, my mom, you know, we, we didn't grow up super wealthy. My mom was a single mom. So, um, let me zoom out just so you guys can see me playing with these colors and seeing what we're going to use. Um, so when I was, when I was little, we would, we would have printer paper and Crayola crayons and markers. So I would draw a page for my sister. My sister wasn't as into drawing as I was. She she loved to do crafts and experiments um, with different like um, like we would we would color with sidewalk chalk and things like that but she wasn't into drawing like I was. Um, so I guess the answer is I've always been really into drawing ever since I was little. Um, my first proper mural on the wall was at age four and I drew all over the walls with Crayola crayons. Um, it was just a bunch of scribbles but apparently the paper was too big for me. Um, and my mom was furious. I was sent to time out but really uh, it wasn't a big deal. She just uh, painted over it later. I think I might have to go to the scorpion set here. Um, and as far as me knowing I was gifted, I don't think I've ever been gifted. I actually struggled um, until the age of about 25 with drawing accurately. Um, I've always loved drawing fairies and all sorts of different creatures and things, and I've always had a great imagination. But as far as drawing realistically goes, I struggled with that up until the age of about 25. So for from age 5 to 25, so for about 20 years, I spent a whole lot of time practicing and honing my skills. I was never talented or gifted. Um, I was actually one of the worst in my art class growing up. Um, but I was given a scholarship to a figure drawing class at a local art community college because um, my art teacher in high school saw that I worked harder than everybody else. So even though I wasn't the best or the most gifted, I spent the most amount of time drawing out of anybody. And so that training was really helpful for me to learn how to draw people. I took eight figure drawing classes, and I also did over 400 self-portraits when I was in high school. Um, and so that kind of solidified my understanding of human anatomy and drawing portraits. And then as I got older, I've just gotten better and better. Like even from the few years that I've been coloring, you can see my skills progress. I think the key is just daily practice. I, I draw and I color every single day. Even if I've had a long day, I wake up at five in the morning to draw and that time is like sacred. I never, um, I never try and skip it if I can. And then the other thing that I think is really important is just loving it. Um, I think my only gifted bit with art is just that I love it so much. And that's what keeps me going is no matter how hard or frustrated it was, I remember this period of my life where I was, I was so mad because everything that I drew didn't come out the way I wanted it to. You know, I, I pictured it in my head and I had this grand idea and then I went to draw it and it looked like rubbish. And it was so frustrating and I was so obsessed about getting it perfect and it would never be perfect. And then over time I realized that it's not about being perfect, it's about expressing myself. Once I kind of let go of that need to be perfect, 
it's when I that's when I started having a lot of fun and that's when I progressed more quickly when I stopped obsessing about being better I got better <laughs> which is so weird but that's how it works sometimes you know you just have to let go of of that and that's why I say all the time like it's not talent it's skill and it's not you know it's not a gift it's a love and I think that that distinction and understanding that you know I have had a lot of years of experience and so you know comparing people like comparing me to somebody who's new um, at drawing and coloring really isn't fair because um, I've just had so much more time and there are people out there who are very talented who can just pick up a pencil and draw really well on the first go that's not me and um, and my message what I really want to express to anybody who's trying to draw or color or do anything artistic you don't have to be gifted to be good the only thing you have to be is dedicated and just love it because if you just keep going, um, you know, you're, you're going to get better the more you do. So um, you, it doesn't matter where you start. It's where you end up, where, where like the process that you're going through and, and the whole like, um, like the progression, you know. So that's why I always say too, it's, it's not, um, you know, progress makes perfect. It's progress you know, I mean, uh, practice makes progress, not practice makes perfect. And, and I always say to people like, compare, don't compare yourself to other people, compare your first coloring or your first drawing to your current work. And you'll see that there's um, a difference there, you'll see that you've gotten better. And, um, and when you look at it that way, um, I think you have a much more positive outlook about your own work. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I know it's not a perfect answer, but, um, yeah, nobody is perfect, exactly. Um, oh, <laughs> Susan, no, I'm not gifted. Uh, I really, I really do believe strongly in, um, just loving it so much that you, you don't give up. Because I remember in one of my art classes, I'm going to start, I'm going to keep going while I'm, um, talking about this, but, um, I'm going to switch to... Uh, SC40, which is dark chocolate. This is in the Scorpion set. Um, and I'm going to start... Actually, let's start with the birdie, since that's in the darkest spot. That's away from the light, and she's going to get hidden a little bit from the, the figure here. So we'll start with the birdie. Um, yeah, everybody's able to draw, and uh, I believe that, yeah, everybody can draw. It's just a matter of... Um, how, you know, if, if you love it enough to keep going. Um, but I remember there was this one assignment that we had and I was in middle school and, um, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, Rosemary, if you saw some of my early works, you, you wouldn't say that. Actually, um, I remember when I was in middle school I re that's when I really started to want to learn how to draw people realistically. Um, and so in middle school, <laughs> I wanted my friends to sit for me and so I could draw them because I, you know, I, I wanted to, this was at the time before internet was huge, you know, um, I, I grew up, um, I'm, you know, I'm kind of old. <laughs> um, so, you know, there wasn't the, the plethora of internet images like there are today. And so I just asked my friends, I was like, will you sit for me and let me draw you? And they were like, sure, sure, I, I, you know, we'd love to, right? And I was, I was drawing mostly cartoons at the time. I was drawing things like Calvin and Hobbes I was a big fan of. I was drawing um, Japanese anime. I was drawing, um, what other things? Oh, I was drawing the Peanuts characters. I was drawing a lot of cartoon characters. And I was rubbish. I was so bad at copying them. I wasn't any good. But I realized that I didn't really, I wanted to draw things that came to life and, and looked realistic. So I I kind of went away from the cartoons and the, um, and the animations and went more for realistic drawing. So I, I asked my friends and... You know, they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll sit for you. So immediately they found out that a drawing takes a lot longer than they thought because I would I would start out and I, I did like um, half an hour of drawing and I was barely even done like the basic 
idea for the like the basic outline for their face because I would be erasing a lot and messing up a lot and then um you know uh they looked at it and it didn't look like them they're like that, you're so bad you're so bad at drawing like you you can't draw anything like the the proportions were wrong the nose was in the wrong spot it I mean the eyes were crooked like it was bad guys and I'm not I'm not saying this as a being a self critic I'm saying this objectively okay there is there's a reason why I don't show my early work it's because I am embarrassed by it to be honest and that's okay like like I'm okay with not being great from the start but what I'm saying is is it's not about being good from the beginning it's about being persistent about not giving up. I, I was determined. I was like, oh yeah, you think that I'm bad? Well, you just wait and see. I took it as a personal challenge. I was like, I'm going to get good at this and you're going to eat your words. And so I just took it as a challenge and started doing my own self-portraits. I did over 400 self-portraits. The first ones looked like Picasso and I was trying to draw realistically. I was not trying to be funny. Right. And then and then by the end of my senior year of high school, I I was better at proportion. I still was not perfect. Um, and even today I make mistakes. So the lesson of this is even if you aren't great um, to start with, it's just about loving it enough and not giving up, because if you love it, then number one, you know, you're going to be willing to push through all that frustration and difficulty because art is not easy. Um, drawing, especially drawing the human figure and portraiture can be very challenging. Um, so if, you know, if you, if you love it and you are enjoying yourself, then you can push through that difficult um, process and start to really enjoy it, even if you're not perfect. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm going to totally disagree with you guys. You see me now after, I, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old, guys. <laughs> so you're seeing me after, you know, 35 years of practice. So you think I'm gifted, but what you haven't seen is the whole entire process that got me up to this point. Let me see if I have an old, really old crappy, where's my phone? Here we go. Let's see. Let's have a show and tell. Let's see if I can find a bad, a really bad version of my work we, we've got we this is embarrassing Laura time we're gonna <laughs> let's see if I can find something hold on oh man um let's see I downloaded a few a long time ago let's see if they're still on my phone yeah here we go here oh this is a co okay so this is college guys you think I'm good in high school, you know, this is college. I still was struggling so much. This is a, an acrylic painting. I'm going to be embarrassed, I know. Can we, oh wait, let me turn up the brightness on my phone. Oh, it's so bright already. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Okay, this is a college work. So this is my uh, first year of college. I did not go for art in college, but I was still, this is a friend of mine. I was still trying to um, draw, here's, oh no, that's a nude figure. Here's one of my self-portraits in high school. I don't know if you can see this. This is a charcoal drawing. You can see the eyes are funny. This is, this is my senior year. So this is after four years of drawing my face over and over and over and over again. Look at how bored I am. I'm so bored of drawing myself. But you can see there's a lot of problems with the proportion. The eyes are too big. The nose is too long. There's a lot of issues going on. But this was, this was after years and years and years of trying to draw myself. So it's not about talent. It's about practice. Um, a lot of these other ones are from figure drawing classes. So I'm not going to show them because they are nudes. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so you can see... <laughs> a little bit <laughs> those aren't even the worst okay <laughs> um, 
Well, I'm sorry that your family wasn't supportive, Rosemary. I still find that a lot of my family um, thinks I'm crazy for being a coloring book artist, too. Um, they don't understand why I don't just draw my own stuff. Um, but that's okay. It doesn't matter what other people think. It only matters if you love it and that you're having fun. So, um, <laughs> Susan. Um, my gift was in persistence. That's my gift. That's what I, my love of it and my persistence. That's, that's what I consider myself to be blessed with. But, um, yeah, it is, it's, it's really tough. So my, my message to anybody who is frustrated or struggling or thinks they aren't talented or aren't gifted, I think that's a load of rubbish. Um, because really talent and gift or whatever is only about, I'd say 5%. Of, you know and and think about it this way there's there's athletes out there who are gifted right real just natural and then there are athletes out there who've worked their butts off to get where they are but on the field you can't tell the difference right if, if they're naturally gifted and they work hard they don't work as hard then they might actually be worse than the guy who's worked his butt off to get there because that guy who's worked really hard really appreciates being there and that's me I'm the one who's worked my buns off to get where I'm at and now <laughs> I'm not giving up no matter what so um, maybe somebody who's talented who didn't have to work for it who's who's you know just naturally good at it maybe they're gonna get bored after a while because it's not a challenge but for me it's a challenge and I love it um, every time I sit down to draw, it's always a, you know, every time I do a coloring page, I'm, I'm using my eraser, guys. You know, it's, the process is a messy one, but that doesn't mean that it's not fun and that we can't enjoy ourselves anyway. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> I can rant about that for a long time, but I'm going to try not to. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh well yeah I just feel like um, like people conflate talent as, as something that it you know it's more important than it's than it really is um, oh hello Jamie welcome <laughs> okay so I'm going to switch to another color. I've done the darks on this birdie while we've chatted. Let's see. I think I want to use that foxy brown. Where is it? Foxy brown. Here we are. Let's just double check. Yeah. So I don't, I don't remember what kind of bird this was. I did look up birds and stuff when I was drawing, but I don't remember which kind it is. Yeah. So I'm going to switch to BW22 foxy brown. And uh, let's let's work in some warmer browns into this little birdie. So you can see I'm approaching the bird, the fluffiness of the feathers, the same way I approach the hair, where I'm just using directional strokes. leave a little there. Okay, for his head I'm just using circular motion because the feathers on the head are very short. So I feel like we can get away with that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
Oh, Susan, but this, the, like I was saying, it's accumulation of 35 years of practice. So I don't think that that's talent or gift. I think that that's hard work and skill. And, um, and I feel like when people say that I'm talented or gifted, it kind of like takes away all that hard work I put in, you know, like, like it kind of like belittles that, that effort. Um, and I know that a lot of people just don't know that I have been drawing for that long. A lot of people don't think I'm actually as old as I am, <laughs> but at the same time, like, that's why I always am saying this message. You, you hear it time and time again in my videos. Um, it's because I really do believe that anybody can draw. And the reason why is because I'm proof of that. Um, I, I was not good at it. And, um, and yet I loved it enough that I didn't care if I was good at it or not. Um, I felt like... Uh, being the best, you know, wasn't the most important part. It was enjoying it. And it's funny because when, when I was in school and there was all these other kids and they were so good, they were very talented. There were kids in my class who were just naturally good at drawing. And I get jealous of them. I'd be, oh, you know, I was a kid and I just wanted to be good and I wanted instant gratification, you know, <laughs> like little kids do. And I got so frustrated and annoyed at myself that I wasn't getting better quicker, you know. But as I got older, I realized that that's not, you know, that's not the most important thing. So um, I'm switching to SD019 Light Mocha. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the lightest parts of this birdie here. But yeah, there were kids who were much more talented than I was. But because I worked so much harder, that's why I got all the opportunities to learn. Um, I had a full scholarship to that life drawing class, which I think helped me a great deal. And then I also, um, you know, as far as like my own personal time, I used to draw every single day after school, after I was done my homework, you know, because my mom was very strict, homework had to come first. But after I was done my homework, for like about four or five hours every night I was drawing and you don't do that unless you love it <laughs> so all right I'm switching to SC40 which is dark chocolate um <laughs> yeah exactly Jamie <laughs> well I think what what my gift maybe was was my imagination because I was coming up with crazy stories for my little sister. I would tell her bedtime stories. Um, she and I were very close in age, and she would always say, "Laura, tell me a story," and I would I would make up a a story for her. And I was always drawing her princesses and fairies to color in. And um, so I think maybe my gift is my imagination and my ability to. Um, to just you know dream up things um maybe that's that's my gift um but as far as like my actual drawing ability man oh man i had to work my buns off for that <laughs> and i'm still improving every day so that's just going to be something of a process <laughs> and that's okay with me i've, I've long since learned to accept that i'm not going to be the best artist in the world and that doesn't bother me one bit, because as long as I'm having fun, and I think that's why I like coloring so much, because it takes so much pressure off. Um, you know, this isn't, like, I'm not going to be selling my coloring, or um, it's not about who's the best out there. It's, you know, it's just about sharing and having fun and collaborating and enjoying the process. And um, so, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how good you are. Okay, I'm going to use this color for the legs, just for the, the dark side here. And they are quite small, the way I've, I've printed this at a smaller size than I've actually provided it on the PDF, just because 
I didn't want to, I actually provided a much larger version for the PDF, but um, I didn't want to print it that big. <laughs> this is printed on a 9x12. Um, hi Starbuck! Welcome! Yeah, there is a difference. And that's okay though, like, I'm, I'm super happy that I've worked hard and um, that I'm, and that I'm getting better. I, I can see my progress every year, so. I'm going to switch to SD019 Light Mocha, and let's just fill in the rest of this birdie's feet. Yeah, I'm happy with, with, uh, working hard. I like it. If it were easy, everyone would do it. Okay. And I have to decide on the beak. I kind of want the beak to be dark. Yep, so I'm going to switch to dark chocolate. This is the SC40. Can I zoom in anymore? Am I zoomed in? Oh, nope, I can zoom in more. It's kind of fuzzy, but let's see what we can do with that. So the bottom bit of the beak will be this dark brown. And I'm also going to put some dark brown just above that top beak. And then the top beak, where is my foxy brown? Here we go. So we're switching to BW22 foxy brown. Now for the eye, I'm going to do... A little bit of pen work. So the same pen that I was using for her eyes, I'm going to use for the little birdie's eyes here. So it's Micron 005. Um, you can use any fine liner. I'm just going to go ahead and go in. Now I'm going to change the direction of the light source. So I'm just going to fill this in except for that one little spot right over there instead. And just to give a pop of contrast, I'm also going to use this right on that beak, right on the underside like that, just to give them a little more. And maybe actually, let's, let's do a little fluffy action right there. Just to give it a little definition. I don't know if you guys can see this too well. Now, when I use my fine liners over waxy uh, color pencils, I just make sure to scribble and clean off the tip before I put it away. Okay, so there's our little birdie fella. I like him being brown. He's going to kind of blend in um, with, with all this here. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the lettering. I think I'm going to use the gold, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> but let's do, let's do the owl. And let's make, since we did a brown birdie, let's make a gray birdie. I think that'll be fine. Let's move him up a little though, so we can see it better. And, um... Yeah, yeah, Jamie, exactly. That's how I feel, too. I feel like coloring is just for fun, so we should just let go of any worry or, or concern if we're good or not and just have fun and put color down and not worry about it. And when people say, oh, I'm not good enough to color or whatever, I'm like, that's just a load of rubbish. <laughs> because you can, you can color anything you feel like and you don't need any skill at all. Um, I just, yeah, I really feel strongly about that. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, that's cute, Susan. Your dad was a, an oil painter. Yeah. And you can develop an imagination, too. Um, I don't think that that you have to be naturally good at that either. Um, I just, that was something I did luck out on and I was naturally very imaginative. <laughs> so 
I think this is a snowy owl, actually. Let me look up a picture really quick because um, let's see here. It's been so long since I drew this page, I can't remember. Oh no, maybe it was a brown owl. Let's just look up owl. So there's no shame in looking up reference images. I don't ever copy anything exactly, but looking at something to help you figure out. Well, I think I actually just sort of drew a, any old owl, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I think he could be several species. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it looks like they're all either brown or gray, so I'm okay with that. Let's see. I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah, I don't really see anything that strikes me. Okay. Well, then I'm not worried about it. We can color him however we want to, but <laughs> okay, so we have, let's zoom in a little bit more, let's see if we can, okay, and I have here the SD018 Graythorn, and we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use this kind of funny shape here as a guide. I already put down a basic guide for his face. So we're just going to color right outside that. So I'm just putting down a base color here and then we're going to go in and do some details. So now I'm going to add this this uh, this part of his face. I'm going to make it white, but white really isn't white, like we were talking about with the eyes. So I'm going to use this same color to add a little bit of detail. Let's see here. This looks a little blown out now. There we go. It's not quite focused either. Can I get it more focused? No. That's it. Okay, it's just so zoomed in, I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think it's a good discussion, and thanks for asking that question, Rosemary. Um, I think, you know, a lot of times people in the coloring community um, get hung up on whether or not they're, they're good enough or whether or not you know, there's like a little bit of competitiveness sometimes, I feel. Like, one of my least favorite things is when people say, this is my favorite version of the page. I'm like, no! <laughs> I kind of hate that. Um, because I feel like they're comparing me to other people, number one. And number two, if somebody else has colored that page and is reading that comment, they're going to feel badly. Um, and... 
that's not the point. That's not why I'm coloring. I'm just coloring to enjoy myself. So when people say that, I don't think they're being mindful of how other people feel. Um, and since it isn't a competition, you know, if I wanted to enter a competition, I'd enter a competition, and I have done that. Um, but with coloring, it's not. Um, I don't, I specifically don't enter coloring competitions because it is just for fun. And, um, and I, I don't want to take the joy away from that, so. Yeah. <laughs> So don't tell me it's the best version of the page. It's not a compliment to me. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I know that they mean well, but it's still it's still hard to read it. And I never know how to reply. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But yeah. My true feelings are <laughs> that I don't like it. Okay, so we're having some fun here. Um, Rosemary, I heard that they are going, they're planning on making them open stock at some point. Um, so that's why, you know, it doesn't bother me um, for right now that they aren't because I'm hoping that by the time I get down to the little nubbies <laughs> that they that they will carry them open stock so we'll see it is a gamble right now though since they aren't available yet Yeah, yeah, don't compare yourself to anybody. That's really, that's the right way to look at it, for sure. Yeah, if somebody likes it, they can just say that they like it. <laughs> they don't have to say they, that it's the best one. Because, <laughs> you know, that's putting other people down. Not needed. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to um, SD024, which is Midnight. And I'm going to add in some darker values. Um, I'm not going to press down too hard uh, because I don't want it to be black necessarily, but I'm just going to add some darker values. And again, just using short little strokes, building up layers. You guys know me by now. I don't know why I love Owl so much. He's so cute, though. <laughs> I just want to give him a good squeeze. Oh, man. Abby, don't get jealous now, okay? <laughs> Little fuzzy guy. Okay, so now I'm going up into here, too. I'm using a light touch. to define more shadows. I'm just using the drawing that I've already put down as a guide. Now up here at the top of his face it's going to be a little lighter. Because again the light's coming from this way. So let's make some more darks down here. This so the key with any fuzzy thing whether it be feathers or fur just short little strokes Keeping your pencil fairly sharp and uh, 
taking your time to build layers. Um, oh, I'm not paying attention. Let's see. Um, yeah, the Arteza is actually, I think, um, not as nice as these. At least these come in separate sets where you, you could buy, you know, one set again. And also, I don't know why, but the Arteza seem more waxy to me than these. Um, these seem more... Like, uh, I mean, they're both waxy, they're both wax based, and they're both not as pigmented as, say, the luminance or even um, the Prismacolors. Prismacolors are a lot softer, though. These have a hard, they're like in between the, the polys and, the, and the, uh, the Prismas. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh my goodness. This sort of question. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm hoping that he'll, uh, the guy who runs the company will think about that. Maybe we could start a petition. <laughs> okay. I don't want it to be just gray. Um, in in this little owl so let's add in some browns near the face i think i'm gonna snag I'm trying to use the same colors we've already used let's look here yeah so i'm going to snag cinnamon this is sd011 and i'm going to use right around the beak here I'm going to use some of this, just a light touch, doesn't take much. And also, right near her hair, I'm going to add a little bit. White is a very reflective color. And also, right near her hand here, I'm just going to throw some of this color in. And let's do a little around his eyes, too, just to kind of give it a little more depth. He's starting to come to life now. He's so cute. I have to decide what color beak. Thinking about the olive gold we used for her eyes. I think I'm going to use that in the eyes as well. Yeah. Um. Okay, Susan, thanks for coming. I hope you have a Merry Christmas if I don't see you tomorrow. <laughs> Um, yeah, these are easier on the hands. They are. So I'm going to use this olive gold. This is SD012. We use this in her eyes. So I'm going to base coat the beak with it, just a light layer. And I'm also going to put a light layer in the owl's eyes here. Like so. And now I'm going to switch to let's see here. Let me sharpen this. Um, now I'm 
going to switch to BW22 Foxy Brown and we're going to just give the beak a little bit of shading. And also the eyes, so I'm going to use the same color. Now, we've got that dot thing happening again, so let me just cover that in. Excuse me. Okay, and I'm going to switch to Midnight. And we're just going to give this little spot that used to be bright, I'm going to give it some darkness. Again, we're just switching the light source. So we need to adjust a couple things in the eyes. It might look funny for a minute, but bear with me. Okay, now we're going to grab our Amy Ball Signo White Gel Pen and let's put a dot right on that side like so and now I'm going to swap back to which color let's add in a new how about let's add in some dark chocolate here, SC40. Let's just give a little bit more definition to the beak, especially right under the beak. Give a little bit more shadow. Just makes it stand out a little more. And I'm gonna add this same color in some of the shadows. Just so it doesn't feel so gray. Again, the bark of the tree will be right there. So I'm just trying to think ahead a little bit. I tend to like to do white objects last, just so I know what's surrounding them, but for the sake of this, this is a little gray and white owl. We're just going to do him now. <laughs> okay, and then um, just to add a little bit more gray, we're going to add um, SD018. This is Graythorn, and I'm just going to add a little bit more texture right in the face. I'm going to go sparingly. A lot of the paper still is white, but I do want to add a little bit more of this color, especially in the shadows, and also just to give it a little more texture. All right, so cute, oh my goodness. Yeah, he's fluffy, I would just wanna snuggle him. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> so now let's move on to the bunny rabbit. Let's see, what color bunny? Maybe we should do a brown, well, we've got a chipmunk. Let's do the chipmunk. I believe they're brown and white. Let's just double check that. Um, mm -hmm. do, do. All right. Chipmunk. 
Yeah, they're brown and white. So let's let's just keep this guy open. So I just have here, I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here. I just have here on um, Wikipedia this image. I don't think it's, um, it's not focusing, but you can get the idea of what I'm looking at here. So on the, on the chipmunk's body, and this isn't the exact, you know, it's not going to be the exact same image because I drew this guy from a bunch of different pictures. I just looked at a few pictures and drew a little guy. I wanted him to be looking at, you know, <laughs> looking over at her. So, um, but yeah, we have, so we're going to have brown on the body and then the stripes are going to be um, dark brown and white. So I'll just keep this off to the side so I can look at it if I need to. And we're going to get going on that. Let's see. I think foxy brown is going to be the closest match for the little guy's brown parts. Let's, yeah, let's start with that and see where he's going to go. So we'll do the chipmunk first and then we'll take a look and see what the bunny, because the bunny could be a lot of different things. Maybe we'll make him a blue, like a blue like gray bunny. Hmm. I wish this would focus better. Let's see if I can get it. It's funny how the light... Okay. Let's see if I can focus it. No. Okay, that's worse. Pardon me while I mess with it. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Okay. <laughs> we do our best. Let's zoom in a little more. And, uh, there we go. Um, oh, good. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like it. Um, yeah, animals are so fun. <laughs> a black and white bunny. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to decide the bunny. The bunny ha could be a lot of different colors, but I know chipmunks are generally um, one type of coloration. So. so let's do this little guy. He's got brown on the bottom bits. So I'm using BW22 Foxy Brown. And we're going to go, I'm going to start with this little nose. He's so cute. Oh my goodness, I love animals so much. I don't know why I just do all the little fuzzy bits. Now why isn't it cute when I'm fuzzy, huh? Why do I got to shave? <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so I think their bellies are, let's see, they're a little lighter on the belly, right? Yeah. Yep. So we'll leave that. That's what the, all that is there. So we leave the belly light. This little bit can be, and I'm just doing a quick base layer and then we're going to Go back in and make it nicer. Okay. So his little paws. Oh my gosh. I love animals, guys. <laughs> um yeah, good question, Jamie. Alright, I think the little paws, yeah, they're brown too. Oh my goodness, so cute. All right. 
yeah, Shannon, Summer Nights. All right. Is that the page that we're working on or no? Different page. All right, let's see. So that's a good base layer. Let's um let's see, let's do his back as well. Oh no, wait, his back is going to be Let's see here. I'm just taking a look. We've got this bit, I'll do this bit, the brown as well. I'm just doing a light layer just to get us going. And I'm going to give a base layer to his ears or her ears. It could be a her. You never know. We're not inspecting him or her. Okay. <laughs> oh, a different book. Okay. Right. Yeah, I love Summer Nights, too. Um, my first book I ever worked in was Lost Ocean, though, so that book is special to me. Um, okay, so now I'm going to switch to SD024 Midnight, and we're going to do these stripey bits. So he's got two stripes, and it looks as though this one kind of just fades in, so I'm going to just fade it in. And I'm doing a really light layer. We're going to darken this up later. And then we also have this stripey bit. And I think I just sort of made this up. I'm not looking at any picture where they have this stripe like that. I think I just made that up when I was drawing it. I'm not worried about it though. It's a fantasy squirrel. There's an elf in the picture. Who cares? So You'll find that a lot in my drawings where I look at things and it looks like it maybe it could be real but it's not. <laughs> it's totally okay. Okay. He's a bandit chipmunk. Come on, guys. That's what he says. Yep. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. I haven't worked in that book either. Alright. So now I'm switching to SD018 Greythorn. And I'm going to just uh, give a little bit of shadow on the belly, which is white, but again, white really isn't white. Not in, in very few situations will you actually find pure white. Okay, now we have kind of a base idea of where all the colors are going to go. Now I can start working. Yeah, Shannon, I was thinking about that because like when I drew him, I think I was trying to make him seem like he was like looking off into space. But now that I look at him now, I think, I think he's looking at her and going, I want to get on her head. I think you're right. <laughs> That's okay. Whatever, <laughs> whatever interpretation you you want, it's all good. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to SD zero one one cinnamon, and we are going to just give some shadows. I'm gonna really focus on this little paw up front first, and shadow behind. So this this front leg thingy that's a technical term there so 
so cute though. Oh my gosh. I think this is the first chipmunk I've ever colored. And I think it was the first chipmunk I ever drew too. So cute. So much fun. Okay, let me look at this picture really quick. Yeah, okay, so the inside of the ear is dark. I'm also just doing that back here. All right. Now I'm going to layer some more fluffies. And so as always, just like the other guys, the way to make them look fluffy and fuzzy is just a lot of short little strokes. Just like you do with hair. <laughs> he is cute. I love drawing animals so much. Oh my goodness. So cute. Ah. When I was drawing, um, I drew Abby twice in my book, and when I was drawing her, it was so much fun. I was like, why haven't I drawn my cat more often? So, all right, okay. <laughs> so I do wanna create a little more contrast right around his eye here. And right around the nose, like that. So cute, 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 cute. Okay, now this little chipmunk, what are their noses? Hmm, their noses are brown. So I'm gonna give him, let's grab a darker brown. What color? Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, Rain, I have two of Abby's um, portraits in my uh, Circle Portraits book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm grabbing SC40 Dark Chocolate. And the little dark nose there. And then I'm going to add some more contrast. just around the legs. And this, and this back paw is going to be in shadow. Um, yeah, I can show you Abby's portraits if you want um, in my coloring book. Yeah, I drew her twice. She was the model for the kitty cats in my book. Um, okay, so now I want to, I want to darken up, let's see here, where's my pen? Here we go, so I'm going to grab the 005 Micron, um, again, you can use any fine liner you like, I'm going to darken up this eye here and change the light source again. This has been a common theme throughout the whole page where we're changing the light source. Um, I'm also going to give a little, a little more definition to the mouth. And now I'm going to use the white gel pen to add that little dot right there. Okay, um, I can see, I need more depth, so where, what color? Let's just grab SD024 Midnight, and I'm going to just add a little bit more 
depth right around the mouth. Soften out that line I just put down. And then also a little bit more shadow on the white fur. And darken up this stripe here. Now on the edges of the stripe I'm going to kind of flick out into the other fur and make it feel a little more fuzzy. Okay, now I want to grab, where's my dark chocolate? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> okay, we've got SC40 dark chocolate. Now I'm just going to soften out some of those spots where I put them in by adding a brown to bridge that gap. Let's put a little right in the ear as well. Okay, and then I'm going to use this dark chocolate on his little footsie here. It's above the New Year's sign, so it's sort of obscured by the lettering. But let's just add that in. I can't really see what color they are for reals, but he is a fantasy chipmunk. And I'm going to also add this dark chocolate right over the black stripes just to kind of soften it. Definitely is dark but it doesn't have to be just black. I think adding another color over black really helps give it dim dimension and depth. So let's do that. Let's do that on his top of his face too. Here we go cutie little guy. Um, okay, yeah, uh, let's take a quick break then. Um, we have been streaming for two and a half hours, which is crazy to me. Let me just grab my book. I will be right back. You can check out the page zoomed out. And maybe adjust the light a little. We've got some waxy glare here, but up my whole chair speaking of Abby now she wants to sit on the whole chair okay Oof. scoop there we go don't worry I didn't sit on her so let's move this out of the way I don't really have this set up for a flip through but um First one is in the steampunk section. Uh, here's Abby number one. <laughs> this little boy, he was so fun to draw. Um, and then Abby number two is in the back. Here she is. There's Abby number two. <laughs> Such a cutie. And this I used a photo. Um, she, it's it's easy enough to draw her while she's sleeping like this. This was actually, I just drew her. She was curled up and I just drew her while she was sleeping. But this one I took a photograph of her because um, she was really playful. And then I drew off of the photo. And actually, if you look on my Instagram account, lara.rafferty.art, you can see a post where I compare the original photo to the drawing. So there's that. 
Let's grab this again. And it's funny how it's uh, got, got a little shine on it now, but uh, let's see. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Enjoy dinner, Jamie. Thanks for stopping by. Um, no boycotts necessary. If you want, you can always watch it back. <laughs> okay, so let's think about this rabbit here. Um, <laughs> let me think. Let's let's do some googling. Let's see what we what we can come up with. Bunny rabbit colors. Oh my goodness, I have so many messages. Let me just reply really quick to my babe. There we go. <laughs> I have a lot of text messages. Sorry guys. Okay, bunny rabbit. Googling rabbits. Yeah, the bunny that I... See, I drew this bunny after the bunny that lives in my yard, and he's a brown rabbit. I do see a black and white... I don't know if you guys can see this. I do see a black and white rabbit here. I don't know. The I, I have a rabbit that lives in my yard and it's a brown rabbit and that's the bunny I looked at. Uh, yeah, see the, this is just like my bunny in the yard. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like all the animals being brown or gray for the most part. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, I think I might do a brown bunny. I could do a white bunny too. Do you guys want to see how I do a white bunny rabbit? That might be okay. Might be kind of Alice-esque. I don't know if I want to do brown, black and white though. Because that's going to be so high contrast. It's going to take your eye away from her face, which is right there. Um, yeah, okay, let's put it to a vote. Do you want to do brown bunny or white bunny? We'll, we'll take a vote. I, I can do a vote. Brown or white. Let's see what you guys say. <laughs> yeah, all bunnies are beautiful. Um, hello, Joanna. Merry Christmas. Okay, we've got one vote for white by Cinnawin. We've got a white bunny by Bo and by Robin. Nice to see you, Natalie. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Okay, we've got another vote white by Rosemary. I think we're going to have a white bunny on our hands here. Oh, Joanna says white too. We've got five to nothing. Not a zip, zilch. Zero brown votes. <laughs> well, I'm going to vote brown just because that's the bunny that I drew. <laughs> we've got, hey, we've got Katrina and Christina. Okay, Christina. They both say white, white. <laughs> All right, I think white wins. So we've got a white bunny, which is good because if you're if you're doing a, a different bunny rabbit like the Alice in Wonderland rabbit, you can apply what we do here to that. So let's let's do a white bunny. I think the whites have it. <laughs> I'm gonna do a slightly blue tinted. Uh, white because we did a brown tinted um, owl here so let's zoom in for the bunny bunny 
and we can get going on that. Okay, so let me look at our color list here. We're going to use gray thorn because that's what we've been using. <laughs> but I think it's about time we start introducing some blues. Because we're going to be using a lot of blue in this image later on as well. So let's see. I think I'm going to pull Zephyr Blue with the Black Widow set. Let's take a drink real quick. Alright, so yeah, the Zephyr Blue is BW59, just uh, sharpen this one, a little dull there, alright, not dull anymore, okay, yeah, I think, I think let's do a gray bunny with a little bit of blue in him. Um, so we're going to use gray thorn and I'll probably put a little bit of cinnamon from the hair reflecting and where's midnight? Midnight. So the colors I pulled, just so you know in case you're going to pull them too, we're primarily going to be using SD018 gray thorn but I'll also use both BW59 Zephyr Blue and SD024 Midnight for the shadows and for the hair reflections, um, that color bounce, um, we're going to use SD011 Cinnamon. So we'll start out with the gray thorn. That's uh, 018. And we can get going. Um, and I'm not looking at a at a um, photo anymore. I put my phone away. But um, if you do need to look at a photo, please do. Um, I'm not really worried too much about precision with the coloring here because he's not going to be he's not going to have any markings. Not like the uh, chipmunk. I'm starting on the dark sides of everything, and again, just short little strokes. Maybe we'll give him a cute little pink nose, because why not? So I'm just keeping in mind the um, the light source. Just always using short little strokes. my boyfriend. How's the Christmas shopping going? Mark is brave enough to be going shopping tonight, guys. What a brave man. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
<laughs> yep. I think he just has a few more things left to get though, so that's good. Um, <laughs> thanks, babe. Yeah, we just finished doing the chipmunk. Yeah, crazy man is right. Right, Starbuck? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> oh. You know, Rosemary, I'm like the complete opposite. Mark and I are very different that way. Um, he, he doesn't mind waiting until the end of the season. I like to have everything purchased and wrapped weeks ahead of time. I'm such a funny person that way. And, and we clash like that in other ways too. Like, when uh, when we're doing a vacation, I like to have an itinerary and plan things out. I don't need to stick to it, but I like to have an idea of what we're going to do. And Mark's like, let's just wing it. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but it's good we balance each other out. He's taught me to be less planning and figure things out ahead. And I think I've taught him to be a little more organized, so it's good. Um. <laughs> and so right now I'm just figuring out where the shadows go and then we're going to give depth and detail later. <laughs> See you later, babe. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> He's out of here. <laughs> He's on a mission. So much fun. Oh my gosh, I love doing fuzzy things. Okay, under the mouth will definitely be darker. So we can all thank Bo for asking us to do the animals on stream. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rosemary. Talk to you later, babe. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, you know, I don't mind it. I don't, I don't get frustrated at all with him because I know that's just how he is and that's how I am. So I don't mind it at all. Um, Mark is an amazing man and he is just so easygoing and uh, I really do appreciate that about him. So it doesn't bother me. But at the beginning it did a little bit, but I've gotten used to it. <laughs> I've gotten used to not planning everything out. <laughs> but He's such a sweet person though. Like if you get to know him, like he's such a nice person. So it was worth overlooking. I loved him too much to uh, to ever make it annoy me. <laughs> at the beginning especially like you know it would kind of bother me sometimes but like I remember my first birthday that we were together he's like I have a surprise trip planned right like pack your bags and I was like and it was in November right and November in New England can be very cold so it's like, where are we going? You know, trying to plan, you know, on what to pack. And he goes, I'm not telling you. <laughs> and I was like, how, what do I, what should I pack? Should I pack a bathing suit or a parka? You know, like a, like a winter coat. He's like, pack everything. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so that was fun. But <laughs> we ended up going to the, uh, the Baltimore, I mean, yeah, the Baltimore uh, waterfront. And so it was very chilly, but it wasn't a bad idea that he told me to pack my bathing suit because there was a, a pool, an indoor pool in, at our hotel, so we could swim. But yeah, it was, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joanna, this is um this is one of my drawings. I can grab you the link really quick. It's in my Etsy store. I believe it's still on sale for a little bit longer. Yeah, it's still on sale. It's part of a two pack that I did actually last year I drew this. Um and someone purchased it and asked me if I would color it. Um <laughs> yeah, Shannon. I was so frustrated. I'm like, what should I pack? <laughs> and I ended up packing so much stuff. It's so funny. Oh my goodness. But we had such a nice time. And it was so sweet. You know, he's always full of surprises, Mark. So that's good. Oh man. It's so funny though. Okay, I went a little too dark there. So let me just grab my eraser. This is the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. I'm just going to lighten up this one spot. And the benefit of doing light layers is you can fix things if you go crazy. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Um, okay, so let's, before we get any further, Let's work in the cinnamon color, the SD011 cinnamon, into the areas closest to the hair. Um, this is going to soften the transition between the two items, the two objects rather. And um, white tends to reflect and bounce light very easily. So that's what we're doing here. We're, we're taking that that color from the hair and we're just adding a little bit of it right on the edges where the white is meeting the hair and since we've used the cinnamon color in the skin I'm just going to continue right on down where the feet and actually I'm going to sh sharpen up some of these shadows here while we're there and 
everything changes in context a little bit. So now we have the hair bouncing over here, but I'm going to do a lighter touch just in the shadows. We're not going to worry fuss too much. You see, I'm just kind of going along the very edge for the light spots. But it can be darker in the shadows. We're going to put a little bit of blue in the shadows too. I'm also going to use this cinnamon color right on the end of the nose here just to get that going for us. Yep. Just a little bit right there. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know if we're going to get married, Rosemary. We've been uh, together for 10 years now. So um, I've already been married once. So, we've been, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Mark and I have been together for a long, long time, and uh, I love him so much. Okay, so, let's, let's skip, let's grab, <laughs> let me think here, let me grab my color chart. Yeah, fairy floss. So, let's really quickly, before we go into the other bits of the fur. Let's use this SL020 Fairy Floss and I'm just going to add a little bit of that right to the end of the nose. I'm also going to add some of this really lightly on the inside of the ear. This is a really strong color, so I'm just putting a little bit down. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think a balance is nice. <laughs> Alright, so now let's see. Yeah, he is definitely a keeper, and I'm not getting rid of him anytime soon. <laughs> so he's stuck with me. Um, <laughs> okay, we have Black Widow 5'9". This is Zephyr Blue. This is a really dark kind of gray blue. It's really, really pretty. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this on the chart here, um, but it is a really, really pretty um, dark blue. So I'm going to use that for our bunny shadows. Um, let's give some detail now. So let's start over here in the very dark area. We've got like right at this eye here. Let's just sort of darken that up. Also right back here where this ear is. Let's give that some darks. So I'm not pressing super hard because it doesn't need it. It's a very, very vibrant color. Very dark. And there's a little line here on his nose. Just do a little bit of detail right there in the face. A little smile. Moving down into his body, right under the chin. And the reason I'm putting this blue is an, I'm anticipating that we're going to have a blue background. So again, since white is a very reflective color, 
I'm going to go ahead and put this blue in and it will make more sense once we have the background in place. Let's give the paws a little more definition. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, yeah, we're definitely a match. Okay, so I don't want to put too much more blue. I don't want it to look like a blue bunny. He still looks white. So I'm going to leave... Most of the highlighted areas fairly bright. Just putting a little bit in. Now for his eye, I'm going to use this really dark blue. So I'm going to go in and just go ahead and fill in. Now again, we're changing the light source. So I'll put the white dot in again, in a different spot though. Okay, in the, using the Uniball Signal White Gel Pen, I'm going to put the white dot right there, and right there, like that. And I don't feel the need to use the really dark marker, only because we've got so much contrast with this bunny. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using Zephyr Blue again. This is BW59. And, um, so we can leave the eyes like that. Okay, so now I want to add just a little bit, a pop of contrast using SD024 Midnight. And I'm just going to use this very sparingly, right under the chin here. This is going to be quite a dark area, so even though it's a white bunny, we're still going to have some black in there. And also right here, right where his chest kind of curves down, and right and just give some more texture right there. Just a little bit. Doesn't need a lot. Always using short little strokes. Okay, his nose looks a little too white still, but I don't want to use that dark midnight color, so I'm going to switch to SD018 Graythorn, and let's put a little bit of gray right there, and right on this side of his little mouth. Now I'm just adding in a little bit more fluffy texture. Like that. Okay. Um, so even though it looks like we have a lot of shadows, when we put in the background, he's going to look very white. 
Um, so I think this should pretty much wrap up this stream today. Um, I can work on this more. Uh, maybe after Christmas we could pick this up again before the New Year. I'd like to get this finished before New Year's Eve just so I can, um, you know, post it and uh, wish everybody a Happy New Year's with it. Um, but yeah, we'll see how far we get. So this is this is what we're where we're at right now. We've got all the little fuzzy bits. So the next time we'll work on the other elements, so the background, the lettering, and all of this for outfit, but things like that. We can work on that together. So um, yeah, does anybody have any questions before we head on out? And I'll just call out some names that I see here. So we have Rosemary, Joanna, we have Robin and Shannon and Christina. Thank you guys for modding for me. Um, Mark was here earlier. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Um, who else is here? Yeah, we're at three hours on this bad boy. Wow. Uh, Starbuck was here earlier. I don't know if she's still here. We've got Katrina. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the same names. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, Sinwin, of course. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad that you're that you like it. Um, hopefully. We will get to pick this, oh, excuse me, <laughs> lighting situation there. Um, hopefully we'll get to pick this back up again after Christmas. Um, I am going to be streaming tomorrow morning, so you will see me again. We're going to be working on a page from the book Villain Sun. This is our normal Tuesday stream, so I'll just show you that again really quick, just that way. Where is that? Hello? There he is. So we're going to be working on this page again. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're if you looking forward to that, I am going to be streaming tomorrow morning. Um, and then we can pick up another lunch with Laura and um, hopefully finish this page up again um, at some point next week or later on this week. We'll see. We'll see how... Um, mad the uh, holiday um, is this year so we'll see <laughs> but yeah thank you so much and if I don't see you guys have a Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah whatever you celebrate I hope you have a merry very very merry holiday and um, yeah <laughs> all right thank you all so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful magical time coloring Bye.